And the service error floats out Point Hawaii. Little things like that you just can't have happen against a team like Hawaii. Just when you get a big point, you got to keep rolling. Well, and that's mental focus and taking that leadership role, saying, okay, we just got a big point. We need to string this together. I'm going to at least put the ball in the court and not make that error. MacArthur off the block. Yeah! Hewitt comes around and gets it. Grayson Dubose up, just talking to his team, trying to get them to settle down. Maeda. Sorensen had to readjust on that one. Satelli out of the back row, into the net. Goes to the Aggies. And Hawaii keeps allowing Utah State back into this. They give them a couple points here and there, and then they play really well. And then they have that, that mental lapse where they're making some errors, and it's just such an up and down game for them right now. Back set again, the consistency has definitely been off in this one for Hawaii. Mafua and Hewitt off in that one. And I think that's the biggest problem right there with Hawaii right now is the lack of connection between the setter and the middle. You have to have that in the type of offense that they run. MacArthur out of the back row. They're going to say four hits. That one never made it over. There have been some changes, though, this season for Dave Shoji's team. He does have his senior setter in Danny Mathua. However, graduating in Amber Kaufman, Graduating a, a Kubio to Nero. That, those voids had to be filled, and he's filled them with a couple of freshmen. So two changes. Utah State with the four seniors trying to stay in this one. Well, Utah State definitely has plenty of leadership to rally the troops here and say, hey, just pass that hit. We're playing well against them. We're doing a good job of stopping them in a lot of different areas. You just have to get those runs of points to stay with it. You're right. The blocking game has been there, and it's really what's kept Utah State in this. But they've got to get their serving going. They've got to do those little things to get more offense. And that one goes wide. Point to the Aggies. Christine Morrill, the libero, an all-time leader in digs for Utah State, back to serve. Tough serve it was. Free ball from Hawaii. to Danielson, the readjust read that perfectly. That's smart, and she puts it right in the middle of the court, and watching her, she just looks a little tired, and I remember, I think it was my sophomore year at SC, we had Asha Kachor was one of our outsides, and we gave her the ball every single time, all year long, and by the end, she had nothing left, and that's kind of something I think Danielson is dealing with here, and that's why they need to utilize Satelli and Hewitt a lot more. Earlier in this season when these two teams met in Hawaii, no doubt it was a little bit fresher Rainbow Wahine team because that was something they had multiple weapons. They utilized Hewitt, they utilized Danielson, Satelli. They worked the ball around. A little bit tougher time here tonight in this. And that one drops in the back row to Hawaii. You're right, we really haven't seen one big kill from Kanani Danielson. She's definitely readjusted a few tips here and there. It's really been all about Chantil Satelli. Well, and the smart thing that Danielson does is she knows she's tired. So uh, without making too many errors, she's able to put the ball in the court, roll shot it, tip it, and still get some kills to help her team without taking too much away from them. Smart decision maker. That one goes out. Utah State was looking for the tip. And, and there you see Dave Shoji going down and talking to his big gun. A player that's taken over 700 swings. And it's twice as much as the next player. I mean, how, how do you do that? You have to disperse the ball a little more and take some of the pressure off of her. Yeah, there you see we talk about Satelli. She's only taken 386 compared to 703 for Kanani Danielson. Well, Tuesday, you're going to see ESPN News' latest college football show, The Experts, as host Lowell Galindo and The Experts, David Pollock, Tom Luganville, Pat Ford, Charles Arbuckle, and Matt Stinchcomb.
provide unfiltered conversation about the hot topics in college football. The experts on ESPNU Tuesday at 1 Eastern. And in case you can't see the live show, you can catch an encore presentation at 7 o'clock Eastern. Well, Hawaii, number five in the nation right now, dropping down from number four because of a Cal win against Stanford. They feel they deserve to be one of those top four teams. Kelly, tell us about who you think, if we were getting ready to go into tournament play, who your top seeds will be. I think in the Penn State region, it'll be Florida. And then Dayton, Nebraska, Hawaii will probably end up in Austin, and then Stanford and Seattle. It's kind of weird this year because none of the, the – the areas that are hosting regionals are going to have their own top seats. So it's going to be thrown around a little. And from my experience, it's always you're, you're waiting until the last minute to really see where everyone's going. You don't know. So obviously, I don't really know if this is going to end up this way. But from what I've seen and based on where people are located and how things are going, I think this is how it's going to end up. Well, and the way the season has gone, those spots have definitely switched around quite a bit. There's going to be more changes, I'm sure, as we get closer to tournament play. And it is interesting. Typically, you'll have a team that's playing on their home court or have a regional that's right down the road. We don't have it this year. A lot of parity this, this season. The crowd thinking the ball went on the other side of the antenna. But Hawaii is going to get the point on this one. That was close, and Grayson DeBose up saying, I think I saw the same thing. It was close. Oh my gosh. That's horrible. That's an impossible hit. Are you from Hawaii? They changed the pursuit rule this season. They allow players to go back behind the up official. The up official is Sid Church. He's not changing it. He's not going to listen to the crowd on this one. And Hawaii. Just five points away from taking set three and their ninth straight sweep. But Utah State hanging right in there. Well, and you know, I, I wouldn't expect Hawaii to sweep Utah State based on their performance tonight. They've been good in hanging in there and making the, the right efforts. And plays like that, I mean, how can you argue with that? They're making great strides here in the season. And I think it's little things that are making differences. Chantel Durant, the 6'2 senior gets that one to go and you're right no matter what happens in this one Utah State's going to find a lot of positives if they watch this visit this video off the block point to Hawaii Kai Hue back to serve out from Christiana to Aninga, number three, who's coming off the bench for Dave Shoji. It was a good attempt. She tried. I don't think she got up high enough over the ball to put it in the court, so she had to adjust around the block. Cassie Hartgrove back to serve. Mafua out to Hartong right in that block. Free ball over to Hawaii, and that one goes out. Little things like that just can't happen against the number five team in the nation. And they're going to go to their bench. And I like that she was trying to make them move on the free ball. That's a smart play, but you have to have that court awareness and know where you're putting the ball. You can't just give them a point on a free ball. Yeah, at this point in the set, it is tough. Short quick set to Katie Astle. Back to Hewitt. Liz MacArthur, the first great connection I've seen from her all night. That was a great set, too. It was an out-of-system ball, and she did such a good job of throwing that up to MacArthur on the outside and giving her some options so she was behind the ball and could see the court in front of her. Back set to Hewitt. She had no chance as the block followed her all the way across. Well, that was a trap set from Mafua again. She put the ball way too tight to the net, and it was too low, so Hewitt wasn't able to get out there fast enough to get on top of it. Nice pass up. That time, they get 
the connection. They were more in system, I think, on that one, it seems. Well, I like that Mafua goes back to Hewitt. It's something that they're working on, something they need to get under control. So why not go back and work on it the next play? And the pass from Alex Griffiths, much better as well, making the difference. Hartong, what a serve. Emily Hartong with the ace. Only two aces from her coming into this one. Give her a third. One point from taking the match. Fowles takes the second ball. Hawaii didn't fall for it. MacArthur into the block. And again. Enough, she says. Tries to tip that one through the double block. Astle to Sorensen. What a rally we have here. And one more time for Liz MacArthur into the double block. The match goes to Hawaii in three. They look a little tired. It wasn't easy, but they will take it. Still undefeated in WAC play. Three match road swing, and they get them all. Best rally of the night on match point. But it was all about the blocking game tonight, and Hawaii had it going. Hawaii sweeps Utah State in three. Back to Utah State, and it's Hawaii sweeping the Aggies in three to make it a 9-0 record now in WAC play. They have dominated conference play so far, and for Utah State, they were in it. But it was not an easy outing for Kanani Danielson and her team. Some struggles here and there, but again, the sweep on the road. The blocking game was there. Utah State hanging right in. Once again, our final score, 25 to 16 for Kelly Tin and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Krista Blunk saying goodnight from Logan, Utah.